I think the weirdest part is when you see it, it's not normal, and then you gravitate towards it. You want to know more. Oh, this is the cardboard P base. Goes along with the cardboard strat and then a drum kit that was made for the cardboard sessions at Signal Snowboard Guys. We jumped right in with making a strat. It was kind of fun just to see what different materials sound like when you, when you plug them in. It, it was an interesting challenge to make it. It made for everybody wanting more. So yeah, we just kept going. The cardboard stuff kind of started with uh, Mark and Dave approaching me about doing something cardboard related to match some of their snowboard stuff. Instead of using a wood neck blank and a body blank, we use these cardboard blanks. Yeah, it takes a little bit of R&D to kind of figure out what works and what doesn't with machining it. It's being helped along with some resin, some epoxy, and that's holding everything together. Being how all the flutes are oriented, it has like wood grain, with this being end grain. If you imagine the wood grain going this way, and it wants to explode and tear out just like end grain does. So that was probably the weirdest part was trying to use it on a router and there's no like super flat surface all the way around because it's got voids. And so just kind of trying to shape it by hand to get it, get what I needed out of it. Basically like a 57 P base. It does have some roughness to it, you know, it is paper. The body itself is actually uh, completely hollow. There's, you know, you can blow air right through it. I did do a pretty thick neck shape. This is like a 880 to 990. It is filled with resin, so it's a one piece neck with the truss rod dug out from the back. It has the skunk stripe and I did it in maple just to have the contrast. And it's just your regular, typical 20 fret. I put American Standard fret wire in this. It's a vintage bridge, Josefina handwound 57s, kind of a 60s looking pickguard on there. No frills, pretty typical of what you would get out of the custom shop these days. It's fun, I've, I've always enjoyed this. For me, this helps me become a better builder. I'm able to figure out what works and what doesn't in terms of tone. There's a reason why we use maple for the neck, and that's obvious, doing something like this. It's a big lever out in space with a bunch of tension on it. You know, the strat's around 150, and the base could be anywhere from 150 to 200, depending on your string sets. And, you know, that's, that's a lot of leverage pulling on the neck, so we want to keep it in the hard maple world, and that's really the strongest that we could put on there. So every time I do a weird project like this, I feel like I get a little bit better in terms of understanding the concept of the instrument. And I always make sure that it is true to what a Fender is. It has to be the same. And all the components fit through and through. Yeah, it's a, it's a P-Bass.